We started uh, basically right after the race riots in Crown Heights in the summer of 1991. It's a very strong uh, ethnic community. So you have the Hasidic population, you have the Caribbean American population, you have the African American population, and um, people are very much into their own cultures and, and ethnicity in a way. But at the same time, there was very little communication going on uh, amongst these different uh, ethnic groups. We were like two ships passing in the night. You sort of had all the, the kindling wood was there on the fire and all you needed was one, one little match, one spark. I was coming back from summer camp the first day that the riots were going on and I just remember seeing all these cops all over. Crown Heights looked like a war zone. There were cops in riot gear on every corner of an intersection. The mayor's office contacted me and said, there's a gentleman by the name of Richard Green, and he runs the Crown Heights Youth Collective. And he's very involved in the, uh, in the black community. So you two are gonna meet and come up with something. And we thought, you know what, let's bring our youth together. And we had no particular strategy. This was the first, let's bring our youth together because that's where we felt most of the problems were. So the, the speaking to each other, the communication, led to that more of an understanding. That's how we came up with, with Cure. So in the Jewish music scene, I was actually the first rapper in the Jewish music scene. So I came in, I played, and then Paul came up to me afterwards and he said, you know, I, I do music and I sing. And so I said, ah, let's do it together. So we now had, Paul became my co-singer in the band. So the band became known as Dr. Laz and the Cure. So we started to write together and, and record together and perform together. And it was, you know, pretty awesome. We did, um, there was a lot of outreach going on. Just the fact of people seeing us making music together and enjoying each other's company is a huge visual statement. We do this thing where we usually start with our backs to the audience and Paul will do, oh, say, can you? And then one of us turns around, see communication across the nation. Let's all sit down and have a conversation. You understanding, I listen to you, you listen to me, we can work things out in harmony. We were invited to speak and to perform in a lot of places. We performed at the Democratic Convention in New York. We performed for Congress in Washington. We performed before a New York Knicks game and our basketball team uh, played during halftime at a Knicks game. But with those experiences, then you, you realize how much w that the commonality is so much greater. There's so much more, and I know it's a sort of a typical line that you hear, but we lived it, we found it to be true that there's much more that unites us than divides us. We've actually had our 30th anniversary, uh, which was last year, so which was very exciting. You know, still alive and kicking. Uh, and the message that we bring is that this is what works and it's easy if you're willing to put yourself out. And people who feel disenfranchised, you are the power. You can make meaningful contributions, you can contribute, you can change the world.